Hey, Colby. Nice sunny day. Colby's been on the move. Turbo, how you doing, baby? It's time to change your collar. Holidays are over. Hey, what's up, gardening friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. The soft voice, don't want to tick off the parrot. I hope you're doing well. I'm great. 71 degrees in January, what, what? How? I'm not gonna question a good thing. I'm just picking up the camera real quick here to talk about some things I do when I have cold damage on my palm trees. You can see my thermo cubes working really well. Those lights should not be on right now. We had a hard freeze as did much of the country just about a week or two ago, got down to negative six degrees Fahrenheit here, which is a bit much for a lot of the plants that I have out here. I have a lot of the hardy, hardy palms. Had a little rant about that terminology last week <laughs> or in my prior video to this one. Had enough questions about what to do now, now that that cold has passed. A lot of people have some damage on their plants. I figured I'd bring y'all along, just talk about it. It's not very complicated, pretty simple stuff. A few things to keep in mind when treating palms or really just any of your plants that have cold damage on them. Most of what I refer to in this video is going to be more on broadleafed evergreens like, well, the palms. So you can see right here, or perhaps magnolias. Magnolias down there, camellias, those sorts of things. Plants with great big leaves on them that the winter air just blows the moisture right out of. So to start off with, I should give some background on what I do with winter protection. I take more of a minimal moda. <laughs> Words, what's happening? I take more of a minimalist approach when it comes to my hardy palms that I keep out here. Mulch, frost cloths, lights, those sorts of things. The frost cloths and lights, I generally only have to break out once or twice during the winter time. We don't drop below zero Fahrenheit here very often. Start things off with in the early fall-ish, usually around November, as a preventative measure, I go around to the crowns of the palms, crown being the center where the spear is. This is the spear right here, this thing. Looks like it's dying. That's the spear. The crown is where all of the leaves and everything intersect down inside of there. I go in with a copper-based fungicide and give those all a really heavy spray, a nice treatment. And I will repeat that usually in mid-January and then again in February. Usually December is not cold enough, so I don't normally repeat it. Doesn't seem necessary, but the last couple of years, December has been kind of chilly. Something I will probably start to do monthly just to be safe. What you doing in there, baby? You find something stinky? I don't want to know what it is. And then a day or so after I spray the copper-based fungicide, any fungus, you can use any fungicide. The copper is more preventative when you're using a copper fungicide. I would recommend with everything we're gonna be talking about from here on using a broad spectrum. We'll talk more about that in just a minute. These, these sirens pass, probably kind of loud. As I was saying, copper-based fungicide, that's more preventative, something to start with and to continue treating with because we're trying to avoid bud rot. Don't want those spears pulling out in the springtime or at any time. Don't want, don't want rot to happen, have to lose the spear, the, the growing point of the heart of the palm. Want to keep that intact. Copper lingers and helps prevent those infections from happening. So again, monthly, probably best during your winter seasons. And then maybe a little bit into the springtime just to help push them through as temperatures are shifting around. Where I live, the temperatures are very shifty. Like today it's 70 and it was like 29 just a few days ago. It's all over the place. And then usually the next day after I do that, I apply an anti-transpirant or an anti-desiccant. I should say here's some Welt. I should have taken the price tag off. That was tacky of me. I'm sorry. This is Welt Stop. Just follow the directions, spray it on the tops, the bottoms, let it run all the way down. Usually a polymer based product that sticks to the outer waxy cuticle of the plant and helps prevent water loss. It helps prevent moisture from being blown out of the leaves. Perhaps adds a few degrees of protection, maybe, I don't know for sure. Preventing moisture loss is a big part of getting the pumps through the winter, so that's why I do that. So those are the big things. Frost cloth, lights for when it's really, really cold. I mulch heavily, but I try not to let it pile up too high around the crowns of the plants. And then the fungicide that's copper-based as a preventative and the welt stop. The welt stop I don't do every single month. I usually do about every other month. That's just, just out of sheer forgetfulness. And now here we are. Negative six degrees Fahrenheit. Have some brown spears here on the Sable Miner. This is when I wanna come in and give these spears another heavy spray, enough where you can hopefully see on camera. So it's getting way down there into the crown of the plant. You're gonna go out of focus, but I don't have a hand free. That's not nice. Nice, heavy soak, as much as I can get in there, and then do that anywhere where there's a frond coming out from the trunks of the palm. So if it's a windmill palm, want to get into all those nooks and crannies with the fungicide. After we've had a really bad freeze, 
which we just did. If you're watching this, maybe you also did. I would recommend just using any broad spectrum fungicide, meaning something that will work for fungus and bacteria. I wouldn't worry so much about the copper aspect. Just using this because it's what I have, but something broad spectrum is probably a better idea. Now we've reached a point with the palms where we're trying to prevent an infection from happening. It's not the cold that I'm concerned about. This plant will push through. It's going to be okay. It's about the infection that may come after as a result from all that dead dying organic material. Freezing and thawing and fluctuating temperatures in general risky business for the palm trees because every time there's a freeze and then a thaw that allows bacteria to congregate and start eating off all of the dead material from the ruptured plant cells from the freeze. So something broad spectrum, good idea. With these, they're still green fairly far down in here. If you can kind of see that in there, see the green. If this were brown all the way down in there, then I'd be more concerned. I'm not noticing that at any of my sable palms that are out here. If I had windmill palms out here, they would be in very bad shape right now. That's why they're in the garage, so I don't have to deal with that. But I would do the same thing for a trunked palm as I would do for a clump palm, <laughs> clumping palm. That's essentially it. A nice soak. I would repeat that monthly just to be safe all the way into the early spring. Want to see lots of growth coming out of there. Once the plant is pushed out a new frond, probably okay to stop worrying about the treatment and stay on top of the anti-desiccants. It's very important to keep the plants hydrated during the winter time. Sometimes easier said than done, right? Because you may live someplace where you don't have a lot of rainfall during the winter time. We've had a good amount of rain, so I'm not too worried about keeping them hydrated right now. It's one of the reasons we mulch, they'll help with moisture around the soil. And we do have winters, which um, winter just started, so I'm sure this will happen at some point. But when we have spells where it looks like it's gonna be more than like seven to 10 days without any sort of precipitation at all, then I will come out and water the broadleaf evergreens. Not heavily, but I have a big three gallon watering pail that I'll put lukewarm water in, Vit, like not very warm. Like I wouldn't wanna take a bath in it warm, but warm enough that it will be able to be more available to the plant's roots when it goes down in there. That, plus the anti-desiccant will help keep the plants healthier until we get to the warmer part of the year where you can really just start fertilizing with pretty much every watering and just doing everything you can to just get them up and moving. That's the big thing right now. You have the damage during the winter, it's keeping them okay until you get into the spring and the summertime when the heat arrives and the plants will start pushing out new growth. Can't get much growth out of the plants when it's below like 40 degrees. They just don't take up a ton of water. And that depends on the plant, but most of the plants that are hardy palms, they just don't grow much when it's cool outside. They just sort of hang out, just look beautiful and stunning, don't they? And dry the plant out and uh, keep the plant hydrated. Keeping the plant hydrated is to keep it healthy. So the anti-desiccant and the water, way to go with that. And then keeping dryness inside of uh, all the nooks and crannies in the plant, plus the fungicide is a good idea. You can take your frost claws or whatever you're using as frost protection and uh, tightly wrap them and bunch them up down inside of these little crevices here. That can help keep moisture from collecting back down around those stems and the spears that are in there. Another option is to take this material and spray it down with a waterproofing spray, something you would use on like your, your sneakers, something like that, let it dry, and then that will provide even more protection because water will beat off of it. I'd avoid using plastic because even though we're trying to keep water out of these cracks that are down here in the trunk, still want to make sure it's not too tightly packed because there still needs to be moisture exchange. The plants are still transpiring. Any moisture the plant releases could get trapped in there if you go in and pack those areas up with plastic. So generally something that's breathable works well. If you use the spray on it, maybe don't pack it down quite as tightly so that there's still a good amount of exchange. If you get what I'm saying, just keep keep the moisture out of there if you can. In general, just the key to success with keeping the palms through the winter time is just not letting too much moisture collect down there in the center of the plants. Talking about trunk palms, you would do the same thing that I was talking about with this material, but you just wrap it, kind of spiral it through the trunk. It's pretty easy to do. That'll help keep moisture out of all the gaps and cracks around the trunk. Yeah, that was a rough freeze, but I think these palms should be just fine. They don't look great. These fronds, once they look like this, they're not going to bounce back. These aren't going to ever look better. Those are going to have to come off in the springtime. As long as there's green on them, I leave them until I start to see new growth pushing out from the plant. I don't like cutting too much off of the plants during the winter months, because anything you cut off opens up the plant and just raises the risk of infection. Even though the fronds don't look great, they still offer some protection, some shelter from the winds and from the colds. When it gets really cold, you can pull them together nice and 
tight and snug around that spear and wrap the whole thing up, that will help get them through those cold spells as well and help keep the spear protected. The spear, if you haven't noticed, that's, that's the ultimate goal here. If we lose some fronds, I don't care. It's not great, but I don't really care. That spear though, trying to event spear pull. Don't want any bud rot going on. Want to keep it green, want to keep it healthy. Don't want it to dry out from the winds. That's why the fungicide and the anti-desiccants are nifty. And from this point on, if it goes below 10, I'm covering these up, which I wouldn't normally do with the Sable Miner, but they look at them. It's so important at this point to preserve as much as possible, as much as the chlorophyll, even though it's not much, there's still some green in those fronds and that plant's going to need it to push out that new spear. Uh, at least, I mean, they can do it without fertilizing everything. There's chlorophyll inside the spear as well, but more is better with the chlorophyll. More green leaves, better. If they don't look so hot, I'd leave them. On trunked palms, I take you into the garage and talk about my windmill palms, but the lights are dimming down. It's getting darker in there. It's pretty simple. If the spear pulls out, talking about springtime here, not in the winter, but if in the spring that spear pulls out, then just cut. Keep cutting on that trunk until you start to see some yellowish green in the center. Fertilize as often as possible, not more than they recommend, but just stay on a good fertilizing schedule and get that spear to push out. If you do that, everything should be okay. And that's kind of the same principle with these. You can't cut these trunks down very far. As long as these spears are nice and snug when you give them a gentle tug, things should be good. The palms can be deceptive though. Sometimes they'll look totally fine and then several weeks later, just ugh. You'll notice that the spear's just sitting there. It's not moving. There's no movement in the plant. Again, moving more towards the springtime when you would want to or expect to see movement out of the middle of the plant. Of the center spear, you'd want that to be moving up and growing and you might give that a tug and the whole thing might just come out. Even though it looked completely fine and had been fine the whole time, it just happens. That's why I like to use those fungicides just to be safe to carry things through. In a, what, like 15 to 20 minute nutshell, that, that's what I do. That's when I have an extreme cold, that's it. Be prepared to overprotect them when it's not as cold as you would normally go into an overprotect. Hmm, that doesn't make sense. Okay, now woody plants like the trees, I also I would just leave them. I don't do anything with those until springtime and then I'll start cutting away at the wood and hopefully find some nice green living wood tissue in there and I'll start pushing out and that's gonna be the same thing. Keep the soil healthy, keep them fertilized gonna take more work after you've had a hard freeze like that to get the plants to bounce back, bounce back, to get the plants to bounce back and look good again. Yeah. All right, it's a beautiful day. I have some cleaning up to do, as you can tell. I still have all my stuff out here from that cold spell that we had. Comment down below, tips, tricks, suggestions, always appreciate the community. It's how we all grow together. It's how we all learn together. There are lots and lots and lots of various ways to protect the plants and to treat the plants. Don't forget to read the comments. Might be some helpful tips down below. Or just say hi, I love talking to everybody. All right, and of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Ooh, bamboo, not looking so hot. Bye-bye.